Hey guys, Zach here, and welcome back to another action figure review, and today we'll be taking a look at the 1977 Godzilla by Mattel. Now a couple things I want to say before I get into this video. First of all, if I sound out of breath throughout, um, this is kind of, this is the tallest thing I've reviewed on this channel so far, so I kind of have to stand for this, and I have to like, angle this figure to a way where you could see it. So if I do sound out of breath, or if I do, you know, like stutter at some points or anything like that. Trying to review this thing is actually kind of a pain. So, yeah, just bear with me on that end, but yeah. Um, another thing I want to say is that, yeah, no, um, for me, it's kind of weird to know that the same company that makes the new Jurassic World figures kind of made a Godzilla figure way back when. I knew this figure existed, but I never knew it was Mattel that made it. I thought it was, like, a different company, but, yeah, no, that's that's cool. That's really cool. And, um, this is actually a figure that I didn't really intend on picking up. When it comes to collecting Godzilla figures, I mainly collect the Bandai movie vinyls, or, like, the NECA figures, or even some SH Monsters figures I'll collect, but not really stuff like this. But the reason why I have this is because, um, my grandfather... He actually sells antiques and goes to, like, flea markets and, like, auctions and whatnot. And one day he went to a flea market and he saw this and he bought it for me, which is really cool of him. So, if you're watching this, um, thank you very much, but, you know, to my grandfather, but, yeah, no. And after holding this thing and after looking at this thing, I'd like to apologize for my Trendmasters reviews, because in my reviews I said that... I wasn't the biggest fan of the Trendmasters figures or how they looked. This figure kind of made me forgive that because I actually like the Trendmasters figures now, but I like this more. Yeah, it's not really like an SH Monster Arts quality or anything like that. The sculpting is weird. There are some weird things about this figure, and honestly, this figure is just, as a whole, weird. But honestly, I love this figure because of that. This thing is actually great, and... Yeah, no, it's ugly, but I love it because it's ugly. Like, there are wheels at the bottom of its feet, which is really weird, and it shoots its fist. But, yeah, no, I love this figure because it's weird and ugly. This thing is great, and I love it. So, yeah. So, anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get into this. And, again, a quick reminder, if I sound out of breath, um, trying to get this thing on camera with certain angles is kind of tedious, mainly because I'm standing, and I'm gonna, like... Yeah, so, bear with me in this, so, yeah. Anyway, first we'll take a look at the painting on this figure, and the painting on this figure is actually pretty good. So, as you can see, most of the body is a greenish color. The teeth here are painted a bonish white, as well as the lips right here. The tongue is painted red with some bits of fire on it, which I always thought was kind of weird. Um, it's his tongue, but it's also his fire as well, which is kind of weird, but anyway. His nostrils are painted pink. His eyes are painted black with yellow pupils, and if we go to the back here, there is a lever where, unfortunately on mine it's kind of broken, but if you push that down, then that's what makes the tongue kind of flick out, so yeah. Anyway, the claws are painted yellow, as well as the toenails, and underneath, the wheels here are painted black, which... Truth be told, I get that this is from the 70s, but I don't really understand why it has wheels, but, yeah. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the painting on this figure. Not a lot, but it still looks very nice, so it gets a pass. Anyway, now we'll take a look at the articulation, and the articulation on this figure is not bad for what it is. So, the arms can move down about that much, and upwards that much. And just to show you again, it can move down that far. The wrists have a swivel, which is actually really cool for a figure like this. The legs can kick forward this much and backwards this much, and the tail can spin around. Also, it can come off. So, yeah. And the weird thing about the articulation on this figure is that, as you can see, right here on his inner elbow, there's a button. And if you push that, he shoots his fist. Again, that's weird, but I love it. So, yeah. And honestly, that's pretty much it for the articulation. And for a figure from 1977, this is actually pretty good in terms of articulation. And I like that a lot. 
I'm mainly impressed with the swivels and the rest right here, but yeah. The head doesn't move or anything like that, but yeah, no. The rest of the articulation here is still good, so it gets a pass. Now, we'll take a look at the sculpt, and the sculpting on this figure, well, sure, it's not accurate. It looks kind of ugly, and it doesn't look great, but to be completely honest, that's why I think it's great, because it's not great, if that makes sense, but, uh, um, yeah, no. Um, it's not accurate to a movie, he has like a weird pig nose. The hands look like they're kind of furry, it looks like there's just like fur on his hand and his fingers are just skin. Also, that's the garage, sorry about that. But, um, yeah, no, the scaling here looks very nice in terms of detailing, and, yeah. The toenails could have looked better though, but, yeah. Either way, yeah. The sculpting on this figure, it's not great, but that's why it's great, if that makes sense, so... The sculpting here gets a pass. Now I'll take a look at the detailing. The detail on this figure, again, looks great. So, we have a lot of scaling throughout the figure that actually looks a lot like the suit from the Showa era, which actually does look nice. And that detailing continues all the way through the body. The dorsal plates don't look accurate to the movie, but again, I don't expect accuracy from this thing. And they're detailed all right. The head is detailed nicely as well, and all the scaling, the eyes look good, the teeth look good, everything about this looks good. There is a bit of excess plastic going down the middle right there, but other than that, yeah, the detailing on this figure is great. And as a whole, this figure is great and I absolutely love it. So at the end of the day, should you get this? Yes. If you're a collector, then definitely get this, because if you're buying this for a kid, don't because this thing is actually very expensive now. This thing, like, the cheapest I've seen on eBay was like a hundred and like seventy dollars, and that's how much my uh, grandfather paid for mine. But yeah, no, this is a very expensive figure, especially if you were to find it. Because a lot of times, if you go on eBay, it's usually sold without the fist, or it's sold without the tail, or it's loose, and it's still about like a hundred or so dollars. But with everything included, this figure can be very expensive, so do look out for that. But anyway, if you want to know how big this figure is, here he is next to Dr. Billy Grant. I'm not going to put him by his feet because this figure is really tall, so here he is next to his head. And yeah. Anyway, that is it for today. Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you in the next video. Peace, Zek out.